What's up, guys, and welcome back to Beyond the Void Horror Podcast. My name is Alex, and today we're going to be doing our horror movie haul with a ton of stuff I got over the past couple of months. I've been letting it build up a little bit, so sorry if it's a little late, but without further ado. So yeah, there's some stuff in here that is first time buys from certain places, some stuff that's not, some gifts, some stuff that, you know, people have donated to the podcast and to the YouTube. So if you guys have ever wanted me to review something that I have not seen and want me to talk about in some sort of fashion, please send me movies. I will watch them. I will review them as long as, you know, and if I have them, ask me, I might just review them for you. You don't have to pay for anything, whatever. I don't care. Just give me ideas. I love that shit. And uh, there's also a link down below to my Amazon. If you want to buy me anything in there that is old, new, whatever, and I'll review those too. All of it is to help out the podcast and reinvest everything back into this show. So thank you, and on with the show. First up, we have Dr. Caligari, which is a Mondo Macabre release. This is a 1989 uh, film, as a matter of fact. Um, this is a release by Mondo, though, that um, you can see on the side there. This is the slipcover. Juice me! Juice me! I'm a juice dog. I'm a twitching ski ball. And you won't let me shiver. This is the 4K release, though. And man, is this film insane. It comes with a booklet that explains a little bit about the history of it, which is always really cool. I love those things. Comes with the Blu-ray and the 4K version of this. This sold out immediately when it went on sale by Mondo. This is one I've been waiting to own for a very long time because they never even came out with a DVD of it. But this is by Steven Syedian, who actually is kind of like an Andy Warhol version. He does the Dr. Caligari in a way that's never been done. Highly sexual, highly weird. There's a lot of really great lines in this movie. A lot of like very artistic kind of way of telling a story very stiff it's just not made in reality it's done in this very fever dreamish kind of trippy way that if you were on acid you would be like holy fuck this is blowing my mind right now so and i love movies like that because uh, i don't really do that kind of stuff anymore and so i can just kind of like you know get a little jolt of this and it'll give me enough taste to kind of make me freak out but yeah, the director on this was just like a uh, production designer from what I recall. And he was a guy that, um, not super popular, but was really into the art scene, uh, probably in LA, but he was born in Chicago. I remember that, but yeah, pretty interesting movie. If you've never seen this, if you like those trippy movies, I would highly recommend checking this one out. This one is nuts and I am so glad I own it now because it's going to be a while before I have to buy another one till we go 8K, right? <laughs> I can't wait. Speaking of fucking crazy, fucking weird mind fuck movies. Well, we got the 4K from Arrow of Naked Lunch, which is one of my favorite movies. First time I ever saw this, I was actually on acid and uh, my friend put it on and it blew my fucking mind. Uh, there was a scene in this movie I always talk about that was where he is talking to the guy and then the guy just says well i'm not really actually having this conversation with you in reality no we're having this telepathically he's like if you look at my lips and his lip mouth starts moving in a in a different way and i was like holy shit dude what the fuck i i was tripping balls and i was like okay uh so i watched it from start to finish just amazed by it yeah ever since he did that i got a, i was a big fan and then i went off to read the book which i absolutely could not read and it's a an a nutty fucking story that was written during a fucking drug fucking fueled bender by William S. Burroughs. But this release, man, I gotta say, this is a fucking cool ass fucking release. Like I have the Criterion one, you know, uh, but this, you know, you comes comes with a book, it comes with a poster. Uh, there's like three different versions. I kept the plastic on because I've been trying to do that lately with my movies. Used to do it with all the VHS and I'm kind of starting to do that again. But yeah, look, you can see the front here and then uh, it comes with a Dr. Benve. Oh, you can't see it. Dr. Benway card, uh, 
William Lee, who the character is technically William S. Burroughs, because this movie essentially mirrors William S. Burroughs' life when he went to another country, which they called the Interzone. Yeah, he went on a drug-fueled adventure. He's got tickets to Interzone right here. Yeah, it says Destination Interzone from New York. We got greeting cards here. This is so fucking cool, man. Like, there's, like, you can send, like... That's William S. Burroughs on the front here. You can... All the characters in this movie, by the way, are, you know, Jack Kerouac. A lot of the people that he was, that, that William S. Burroughs was friends with. But the names are changed, and it's directed by David Cronenberg, who, as you guys know, is one of my favorite directors who did Videodrome and many other things. But yeah, I wanted to share this with you. This is just the 4K. I was like, I don't need the Blu-ray because I already have it. Unfortunately, I end up buying the Blu-ray version of this as well as the 4K by accident over in the UK. Now I have this extra copy that is in another region that I don't know what to do with that I'm gonna have to sell <laughs> because I'm not gonna pay for shipping to ship it all the way back. Bag. So it comes with the poster, which is double sided. So you can pick and choose which one you like. I like the little Mogwai guy. I like the Mogwai guy uh, where you, just, you drink the Mogwajism. This movie is such a trip, man. Like, if you like video drama, it's completely different than it. Highly sexualized. It is like a living piece of art. The book on this is fan fucking tastic. This is a huge release from uh, Arrow. If you haven't picked it up, you can go to arrowfilms, I think, dot com and order it from the UK. They do ship here to the United States, I think, for like 10 bucks. So it's not too bad. Uh, but if you have to get a copy and you want to get a copy, they don't sell it in the US. But you might find one on Amazon. I think it was like 40 bucks. Come, come, Mr. Lee. You don't have to play dumb with me. No, no, no. That would be foolish, wouldn't it? Up next, we got Monster Man, which is a 101 films, which uh, I've gotten another movie from them last broadcast. It was like the New Jersey Devil. But this is from Plemke. He bought this for me online. It is not in the region in which I uh, the U.S. is. But I still like this movie. It's very underrated. I would like to review this again. I think we did it on the podcast once. It's like a mix of like Wrong Turn, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and Jeepers Creepers with like a comedy through story about this guy going to his ex-girlfriend's wedding. And he meets this girl on the road and she turns out to be a, a fucking serial killer or at least has a serial killer family and in a bunch of hijinks happen it's pretty funny it's nothing that's like a nine out of ten but it's like a seven maybe 7.5 if you like that kind of stuff it's got some gore in it it's got a monster truck in it and it's got some pretty funny jokes in it it's got that guy from not another teen movie that was playing the guy that always followed the girl around and gave her tapes and stuff he's based off that john hughes movie 16 candles the ducky guy but anyway Anyway, good movie. Up next, we got Shadow of the Vampire, which, believe it or not, I don't think I've ever watched. This has William Willem Dafoe and John Malkovich in it. I don't know why I've never watched it, but she picked this up at the Goodwill for a buck. Also got Six Cents, Bruce Willis. I think we already have this one, but she just gets them anyway because they're a buck. Uh, we got a brand new unopened copy of Spinal Tap, the special edition, which is very cool. Yeah, it was unopened, but you know, I don't know why they made it $2. <laughs> it should have just been a dollar. No one ever marks it up. But yeah, this is a fun shockumentary. If you've never seen it, you should definitely watch this. Uh, they had done it. I think there was a TV show in the UK called Comic Strip. And they did stuff just like this one. But this one came out in 1984. And I think that comic strip one was around the same time with Rick Mayo. I just recently got it, as a matter of fact. And we'll be talking about it in a second. So it's funny we got this one <laughs> with that. Up next, we got Vacation of Terror 1 and 2. 
which I ended up liking part two a little bit more, but fans of the original, like who actually watched this back in the day, really love the first one. Like Mexico is a huge fan of the very first one. I love the second one because it is so bananas. It's essentially about a witch that gets burned alive in front of this house and they like trap it in a doll, her soul or something like that. And then fast forward in the future, this kid goes to this house that they're like, I don't know what they're doing there but it basically like reawakens the doll and then the doll possesses the little girl and then the little girl uses her mind powers to like make people float across the room and stuff and a lot of weird stuff the first one's very tame there's not a lot of gore or anything there's very little blood but it's still very ingenious and it's uh, a big a big movie that's played over a Dio de los Muertos every year. So second one gets really bad shit eighties and man, it is, it's a lot of fun. This witch, literally the thing that you're seeing at the top here chases them around after changing from a doll to the witch in this which is, this is not how the witch looked. It was just a regular woman, by the way. <laughs> but it's like a dude who stalks people and makes them do crazy shit. There's like poltergeist references. There's evil dead references in here. There's a ton of stuff that they did in this movie that is pretty wild. It's, it's a what the fuck wonder but yeah i got this from vinegar syndrome very cool release these had never been released i think they got released on dvd once and then they picked it up and put them both out for one uh for the same price as one now these aren't you know these aren't for everybody so just so you know that up next severin put out extraterrestrial visitors which is an E.T. ripoff. This is a movie that the Mystery Science Theater 3000 or the guys that did that made popular. A lot of people always re reference this movie, but it's finally out on Blu-ray. I wanted to get a copy of it. Plemke bought this for me, so thank you, Plemke, uh, for this one as well. I wasn't able to get the t-shirt and the doll that it came with that Severin was offering because I didn't have the extra Skrilla, but I did decide to pick up another movie that they're putting out at the same time called Bad News, and this is that comic strip show that I was talking about with Rick Mail. This movie is a fucking so bad it's good childhood movie that is very odd and creepy and weird it's not supposed to be scary it's really just a kid's movie but there's so many things in the movie that are just ridiculous and over the top silly that you can't help but laugh at this kind of movie <laughs> the aliens look freaky as shit they got these like snorkel i don't know if you can see it but you can kind of see right here they got these like snorkel things but yeah i had to pick this one up because i you know this is a hoot so this is one you can make your own mst3k with you know what playing is trumpy yes it's where i break you in half this is bad news which comes with the complete comic strip presents channel 4 films which is nearly 20 hours of legendary uk comedy and special features on three different discs but yeah rick mail is in this you've got peter richardson nigel planner alexi sale sandy johnson oliver stapleton stephen frears roland Riveron, and so many more there's a lot of people in this that you just will be like oh my god it is actually pretty funny very edgy humor i've always been kind of a rick mayo fan but i picked it up kind of on a whim because i like spinal tap and they have bad news which is this band which they did like two hour long or well like a 30 minute short and then like a 40 minute short or something like that special on these on this fake band and it's really funny stuff but comic strip used to be the show that they would do and it's like a half hour sketch where they just do like one story and make jokes about it and it would come out like every week i guess um i never you know grew up with it but i definitely kind of like that kind of stuff i like sketch comedy and stuff so i wanted to pick it up this is pre young ones so early rick mayo stuff that he looks really young in this but yeah i wanted to check it out so i think that was like 50 bucks safest car in the world Up next, we got VHS 99, which is on Shutter. 
but I like to collect all the VHS. This is a series that a lot of people are pretty upset with right now. I don't know why, and I think it's kind of silly, really. The same thing that happened with Creepshow is happening with VHS 99. People like that that originally started it, like Simon Barrett and like Brad Miska from like Bloody Disgusting and people like David Bruckner, who's huge, you know what I mean? They they love this stuff and they wanted to bring it back, but probably for a little less money than they were going to get because it kind of like died off a little bit. So they started out with 94 and a lot of people were really happy with that when they actually really enjoyed it. But there were some people that really did not like this one in particular. And I feel like this one had less money than the one before it but I don't know. A lot of these are self-produced. A lot of these don't get a lot of money. They're just people's love projects and they put them into an anthology uh, with the amount of money that they can afford, you know, to, to put these kind of things out. I know a lot of directors who put their work out in shorts to try to make a feature film in order to do this kind of stuff. So they put these shorts out and then they put in anthologies to kind of like embrace that with like a, you know, story through line. I really liked this one. I thought it was fun. It was on a, a little bit on the sillier side. So I think a lot of people were expecting a big, 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 big budget. Kind of like how VHS 1 and 2 were. But these ones have been kind of like a little bit on the lower end uh, budget wise. But it's whatever you can make magic with, I guess. But I really like this one. And there's another one coming out and apparently another one after that. They made one back to back with this. So I don't know what year it is. I forget. But I saw it somewhere. And uh, yeah, I'm going to collect all of them as, as much as I can. And I would love to see the Quibi ones out somewhere on some like additional extras or something like that. That would be amazing. I might do a uh, best of on those, by the way. Remember, fresh souls taste the best. Next up, we got End of the Line. This is a movie that came out in 2007. Maurice Devereaux, who did the movie Slashers, by the way, which was a really poorly acted, but also kind of fun and tongue in cheek take on like a TV show, kind of like, you know, where slashers ran around and killed the contestants. And if you lit, if you won, you won a lot of money, kind of like a battle royale with slashers. He did this movie called End of the Line, which was about the end of the world. It's got cults, it's got demons, it's got gore that we're doing this week. So next week we're going to be doing Creep. 2004 and this one and we're going to be talking all about it but yeah this one was like a really interesting uh take on the end of the world there's some pretty cool stuff that's in this i don't want to spoil too much about my thoughts on it because we got a whole new episode coming out monday on it but yes this is a terror vision uh release i don't know if you could see it down there some of the guys that worked at Vinegar Syndrome, I guess, work now at TerrorVision. Uh, they have very similar sleeves to uh, Vinegar Syndrome. They feel the exact same almost. It's cool to see so many boutiques. Uh, there's a lot of extras on this disc in particular. I had to pick it up. I think I got it for 25 bucks on TerrorVision's website. So if you want to check them out, they've got a lot of new stuff. New boutique. This is a very good release. There was like a 45-minute interview with the director. That's more than, I think he's ever had and i i admire the shit out of that this guy just stopped making movies after this and to be honest i like slashers and i like this one for the most part i'm not going to tell you how much i love these but i like them if you haven't seen it listen to the episode next week sorry no donations today god loves you and last but not least we got a little sale going on in our library where they got a huge donation with a bunch of old books and a bunch of movies and stuff like that and so they gave you a bag and it was $15 a bag and you could fill it up with 15 items and uh, this is one of the things that uh, we got uh, which is you know I have like the UK version the Blu-ray version the I'm waiting on the 4K version. I've got a lot of versions up there um, but I wanted to have this for sure because this is probably one of my favorite movies also known as brain dead um but yeah this should be getting a 4k release sometime with meet the feebles and the bad taste movie and the other one the secret garden one where the girls kill their mother and father or something like that or their foster family but yeah i love this movie if you don't know anything about it you need to watch this immediately probably one of my number one favorite films of all time one of the more graphic gore films of all time uh i love it <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
But yeah, guys, that's it. That's everything that we have for this um, haul. And I hope you enjoyed it. Found some new stuff that maybe you should check out and maybe some, you know, new podcasts that you'll listen to. Wink, wink. <laughs> Just love talking about these things. If you enjoyed these kind of videos, please let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Anything that you would like to see, want to see, I should review. So thank you so much for spending your time here with me. You guys are the ride or die motherfuckers. I appreciate you guys. And that's why I do these videos because I love it. And I love you guys. So thank you so much for your support. And as always, long live the boy.